Hello everyone, my name is Alex, and I'm going to show you how to program a computer. Even if you've never tried to program before or have no idea how to do it, it's not actually that hard. I'll just show you the basics here and show you what you need to get started. Now there are literally thousands of different programming languages. The one we're going to use is called Ruby, which I picked because it's very easy to use for beginners. So go to this website, and if you're on Windows, I recommend you use the Ruby installer. When you do install, I really recommend you click the Add Ruby Executables to your Path option. This will make it a lot easier for you, trust me. You can write code in a basic text editor like Notepad, but I recommend getting a better one, such as Notepad++ if you're using Windows, or Text Wrangler if you're using a Mac. So here's how you write the most basic type of program imaginable. As you can see, it's quite simple. It looks a lot like English, so it's easy to understand. So you just need to type in that and save it. When you save, make sure you save it with a .rb extension. Now to run that, we need to use the command prompt. If you've never used it before, it's not that hard. Just follow along. Now once you're here, you just type Ruby and then the name of the file. And as you can see, it's executed our first program. Alright everyone, it's finally time to use math. Oh no, not math. Whoa, whoa, don't don't stop the video right now. It's it's not that bad, I promise. I'll show you it's it's not that bad. We're just going to do some very basic math. So we'll say five plus five. So save that in the same spot as last time, and you run it in much the same way. Now obviously 5 plus 5 isn't very useful. We can figure that out on our own. We're going to use variables. They're little bits of memory that can store a value that you enter. So we can make a program like this and it will show us x plus y. These are what we've named our variables. Now when you run it, it pauses to give you a chance to insert a variable. So put it in, hit enter, put in the next one, and there you have it. You can think of a variable as being like a type of container. They can store values entered by the user or returned by a function. So that was kind of boring. Let's make it look a little nicer by doing this. So now it'll prompt us. And it, well, that's different. So, as you see, we got a really ugly error. You probably don't know what it means, but that's fine. It's because we use two different data types. Variables hold different types of data, like numbers or text. We tried to add text and numbers, which you might think is pretty easy, but computers can be picky about it. So let's go back and edit our program to turn these integer values into string values by using a function. Well, well, look at that. You can think of a function as being like a type of machine. You give it an input, it does something to it, and then it gives you an output in return. So a vending machine is kind of like a function. You give it an input, and it gives you an output. Of course, the real fun is making our own functions. We can just do this and we can make our own. So let's make one that returns the maximum of the two values that you give it. We can figure out which of the two is bigger, v1 or v2, with an if statement. If v1 is bigger than v2, we say v1 or else we say v2. Railroads have switches which let the train travel in different directions based on what the switch is set to. An if statement can be considered like the same thing for a program. If you include one, you can have your program do something entirely different based on conditions. We also have a while loop. While 
i is less than or equal to 10, we repeat this. And that's enough for you to go out and write your own program. You could write something very basic, but it's a start. Have fun. See you next time.